Hey everybody, Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna show how to make the ballpark, which is this piece right here, but only this time we're going to make it in the RMX in the three axis control. So here I am at my DPM RX3 in my showroom, and I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to make this piece part. I do wanna tell you that we're not gonna machine the part today. This is mainly just for those people who have been asking for a representation of how to program this part from start to finish so they can follow along. So as you can tell, you can download the blueprint from the bottom under that link, and then you can follow along with me as we make the part. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, I'm at the main screen of the RMX, and I'm going to go to the programs section, right? And just like in the KMX and our other controls previous, it asks you for a program name. Now because the RMX has a keyboard with the touch screen, I can just come in here and actually give the proper name of the part. Whoops, I missed. Sometimes I'm at the wrong angle. That looks correct. Followed by the abset key, either in the keyboard or on the control. And then if I push the keyboard again, it'll go away. I'm not gonna change the scaling. We're not using multiple fixtures. We're not changing the definition. So in this case, I can either push go to begin or I can simply swipe forward. So now here are all my can cycles on how to make this part. But just like I do in every other video, I'm just going to select the ones that I'm using in this particular case. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a bolt hole pattern. And in here, you'll notice that at the top, it gives me a choice with a drop down menu that says, are you drilling, are you boring, are you tapping, or are you doing helical drilling? It's set to drill, which is what we need. But if I had to change it, I would just use that drop down menu and select. I'm going to leave it on drill, and I'm going to hit the abset key. So I've got five holes to drill, so five absolute. The center of the part is zero, zero. The Z rapid you'll notice is already pre-filled for me. That's because the default section of the control, I have 50,000 set as my Z rapid. So instead of having to type that every time, I can set my defaults to make this a shorter process. My Z end is the depth of my drilling. I'm going straight to the full size of the hole. So I'm going minus 0.3, absolute. The radius is half of the dimension shown on the print. So it's 1.25. The angle from zero to the first hole is 45 degrees. There's going to be three pecs, and the RPM is gonna be set at 1800. And the feed rate to do the drilling is gonna be 10 inches per minute using tool number one. So you'll see now that the look screen is automatic on the RMX, so you see my zero reference and my five holes. Just so you know, if you touch the screen, that green bar shows up, and if I move it over, I can see the previous event if needed. But for the camera's sake, it's easier if I keep that screen larger. So the next thing I'm going to do is look for my button for pockets. Select pockets. Again, it says, is it a circle? Is it a rectangle? Is it an odd shape? Is it an island pocket? Something that actually has bosses standing in the pocket. But in this case, it's just a simple circle. So again, it needs to know where the center of the pocket is, and it's still zero, zero. My Z rapid is auto-filled. My Z end, according to my print, is minus 0.2. The radius of the pocket is 0.75, and you'll notice that in here it's asking whether I'm cutting clockwise or counterclockwise. Again, it has a drop-down menu, but in my defaults, I have it set to always go counterclockwise, so I only need to change it if I want to go clockwise. I'm going to accept that. It asks me the depth of pass, that's the depth for each cut. I'm going to change that to 0.1. And then my finish cut is also preset in my defaults. So I'm gonna leave that 10 thousandths for the last cut. It remembers my last RPM. However, I need that to be higher. So I'm gonna put it at 3,000. I'm gonna keep the same for my finish RPM. My Z feed rate for 10 inches, that's as it enters the material, that is fine. But once I'm in the material, I'm gonna run at 40 inches per minute. I'm gonna slow it down to about 35 for the finish cut. I'm gonna to use tool number two. And I'm also going to use tool number two for a finish cut, okay? So what that's asking me is do I want to use two different tools, one to rough and one to finish? I'm saying I can do it all with one tool, okay? So again, you see the circle, and now it asks what I want to do next, and I'm going to make a profile. In the profile, I still have those choices of circles, rectangles, or odd shapes. I'm going to select a regular profile, and it needs a starting point. Starting point is at the top of the geometry, which is X0. Y is 2.45 inches. That's the size of that large radius on the print. My Z rapid stays at 50. And I want to go minus 0.3 so that I get beyond the actual thickness of the part, which is a quarter inch. The tool offset is set to left. That's also in my defaults. 
My depth of pass, I'm gonna change back to 0.1. My finish cut of 10 thousandths is in my defaults. And because I'm gonna use the same tool for all of this, all the rest of the questions are already pre-entered for me so I can just walk through them all. You'll see at the top of the screen, there's a little blue dot. That's to show me where I'm going to start this shape. And it's asking me whether or not the first piece is a straight line or a curved line. So I'm gonna select arc. It assumes you wanna go clockwise. I can change the counterclockwise there with that drop down menu, but I'm just going to accept it. X ends at zero and a negative 2.45 inches. And then the center of the arc, you'll notice already trying to draw a picture. You'll see a dotted line there. When I answer the center, it becomes a solid line and that light comes on and says, okay, I've got it. The last three questions are talking about whether I wanna blend a radius at the intersection or whether or not I wanna give the size of the radius or the degrees in the arc. Those are only needed if I don't have all of these questions in the previous section. So from here, I'm just going to swipe forward and it asks me, what do I wanna do next? So I'm gonna do a milling event. It asks, is this tangent to that arc? It is not. So I can simply select no, cause it's already up there. X goes to a negative 3.064 and the Y goes to a positive 0.5045. You'll see my okay light came on again, but I still have the ability to put that blend radius in there. So the con red is 0.841 and then swipe forward. You'll notice it doesn't know what to do with that radius yet. So it's waiting for the next piece. So our last piece is a straight line. It's not tangent to the previous. It ends at zero and 2.45 inches. You see my okay light and you'll see the completed piece part. Swipe forward one last time and push end AGE that gives me all my ability to do something else in the program. But in this case, we're completed at that part. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna open my tool table. And in my tool table, you'll notice that I've got some tools in my library, and I've also got some tools up here that can be described. And in my case, the tools that are in my library will work for this. So instead of down, using all of these menus to change this, what I'm gonna do is just come into here where tool number 101 is and say, this is tool number one, and it puts it up into the program and I'm gonna select, you know what, actually I did that wrong. I'm sorry, that's tool number one. And finish end mill is tool number two. I skipped the center drilling part. I forgot about how I was doing my own job. So now that's correct. Close the tool table, and I'm going to change over to the edit mode, okay? In the edit mode, I wanna explain a little bit that in here you can make a lot of changes that are different than what you could do in some of our previous controls. In a later video, I'm gonna show you some of this cool stuff. But for now, what I want to do is I'm just going to go to setup mode and I'm going to select toolpath. So in the toolpath, you'll see I see a 3D view of the part. So you can see the cuts in the Z axis. You see how it spirals out. You see how it pecks the holes. Okay. And I can change this to a top view, a front view, a side view, however I need to view it. And I also should tell you that it also has the capabilities of showing part verification. Part verification basically says, what do you want to do? And I say, I want to first tell you how big my piece of material is. But my actual block is six by six. So I'm going to tell it that one corner is minus three and minus three, that the material is 0.5. That's a negative dimension as well. The opposite corner is a positive three and the top of the part is zero. So once I get done with that and I push return, I can go to make part. You'll see there's my block. And I'm gonna slow this down a little bit so it doesn't happen so quickly, but you're gonna see that when I push verify part here, you're gonna see the actual part being made just as if I was machining it for real, okay? So you'll see the drilling, you'll see the pocketing with all the levels, you'll see the outside of the part with all the levels, and when it's complete, you'll see so, okay? Now it's important to know that because this is a touch screen, it works like your cell phone, so I can make this part bigger, I can make it smaller, I can flip it around, I can do whatever I want for the representation of how it works. And the last thing I'm gonna do is push exit, right? And at that point, the only thing I have left to do is to make the piece part. So I would actually have to go into DRO mode, set my zeros, and pick up where the center of the part is, and then get my tools ready, and then just follow the instructions on how to make the piece part. I know you've seen enough of that in some of the other videos, but the whole idea of this particular video was just to show you how to make the ballpark so you can follow along. So I hope this gives you a lot of the answers you were looking for. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and keep on tracking.